We all have a purpose, am I right? And, and, and we want to know that purpose. And when we better understand that purpose, uh, we better know, we better, we better understand what we ought to do. You see, we, we look at nature and, and we look at what God created and, and we find that whatever God has created, right, whatever God has created has come into such meaningful purpose. And, and we look at nature specifically, nature. We look at nature and, and, and we see how nature plays a big part. And, and when we find when, when, when God was creating this world, He would create everything that we need that would fulfill its purpose for us and then create us. And that's how we, we better understand that, how we are so loved by Christ. You know, He, he, he created the light, He created the day, the night, He created uh, uh, the land, He created the sky, He created the sea, He created the animals, the plants, and the food, and, and everything that He created. And then when everything is ready for us, then He puts us in. And you find even in his creation that the nature speaks of his character. And the nature was created for us. And but, but, but guess what? So little time we take spending on nature. Some would say that nature itself is a second Bible. And so that's why when you are in nature... It's easy to feel more peaceful. I hope you feel that, you know. Uh, but sometimes it's hard, am I right? We go, to the, we go to camping and, you know, we want to have this mindset of relax. And, and instead of relaxing, we are so annoyed with the mosquito that's biting us. And we smell like a mus mosquito repellent. You know, we don't smell good anymore. And, and halfway we are afraid at night. It's hot. We are, we're so comfortable that nature nowadays is not so peaceful anymore. <laughs> Uh, when we went for the camp, it was actually something that we enjoyed. But something to worry about as well, because as we were about to sleep, we heard the thunder. Some did not hear, some fell asleep already. But I heard the thunder, so I moved my tent quickly <laughs> into, into the shade. And I was sleeping so peacefully. In the middle of the night, I heard all of them, Ah, it's raining, it's raining, and they are trying to... You see, you see, sometimes it doesn't feel so... But nature has... I want to I wanna speak on, on, on one specific insect. As, as, uh, what's this? This year, Pathfinder was into nature, am I right? And I want to talk about one specific insect. Oh, is it? It's an insect, am I right? This, this bee is an insect? Yes? And surprisingly, uh, surprisingly, this... this I said I wasn't just wanted to speak about the bee. Surprisingly, there was a bee over here. And I said, praise the Lord. All right? I don't have to pretend to be the bee. You know, sometimes when you speak to the young people, you got to do actions, am I right? You know, dress up so, so smart and then you have to now start pretending like a bee to get the attentions of the kids. Now, but, but thank God there's a bee over here. Now, recently, recently, some of you might have known, and, and maybe the older one will go like, ah, this is old knowledge, but, but this was new knowledge for me, that, that how important the bee is. There's, uh, people, some people say that if the bee were to be extinct, the human race would be the next. So I was like, how, how can this, this bee, which actually is actually supposed to be small, how can this small bee <laughs> be so important in our life? Like, what, what is it got to do? I mean, every time I see a bee, nobody goes like, ah, oh, bee, we, we run away from the bee. You know? We are, we are told that if you see a bee, you know, you go away from it. Don't, don't play with a bee. It's not a pet that we, that we keep. So we go like, how can this bee be so important in our life? And as I learned about the bee, may, maybe you know about the bee. Well, what does the, the bee do for us? If, if the bee were to extinct, what will happen? No honey, definitely no honey, okay? Definitely no honey, okay? That, that's for sure. We will, we will not have honey. But we can survive without honey, am I right? Something, you know, because, because there's a saying that if the bee extinct, so do we. Next, the next thing that will be extinct will be with the human race. So, how oh, is that? No honey? We, 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 um, I haven't eaten honey for a long time, you know? I, I, I feel very healthy today. <laughs> so, what, what, what will happen? Huh? No pollination. Means, uh, uh, out, no, no, no growing, you know, the plants will not grow, no vegetables for you, no, no plants, the plants, you see the plants, for, for the bee, you see, the bee comes 
and, 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 and he goes to these beautiful flowers and the flowers, wow, look at that. Whoever designed it, please take credit to it, okay? This is a flower, am I right? It's not, it's not a flower? It's not a flower, okay? It's not a flower. We'll, we'll stick with this flower then, okay? <laughs> that, that's not a flower. All right, so, so, so the people go to the flower and, and, and then you take this pollen and, and they will pass it on. It would stick to their, their, what is this? Their, yes, their furry legs, yes. And they will go to one plant to the other and, and that's where uh, the plant can reproduce. And it is told that it is up to 70% of what we consume will disappear if the bee disappears. So, so some were saying that the supermarket where they sell the fruit and vegetables, half of it will be gone if the bee disappears. And I go like, wow, a bee plays such a big part. And I never knew about it. You know, a bee plays such a big part. And we find that through creation, the bee is not the most important thing in God's eyes. How much more important, how much more an important role do we human play? How much more important role that you play? Adventurous, pathfinders. What is that role? What, what is that divine purpose that you are created for? Because the bee was created for this, for the human race, in other words. And we find how meaningful it is. We also know the end was created for a purpose. For the Bible, the end was to, to what? To be used, top one. End is used in spiritual matter. It's to rebuke those who are lazy. <laughs> it's always used. When someone is lazy, we go like, look at the end, you sluggard. We use that word, you know, end. Even a cockroach plays a big part, am I right? A cockroach, it plays a very, very big part and most of us don't know. When you see a cockroach, what, is it, what part does it play? It tells you that it's time for a reformation in hygiene. <laughs> Alright? If you see a cockroach in your house, it's time for you to clean your room. Especially if you see a cockroach in your car, I'm telling you. There was once we left food, a pizza, at my friend's boot, a car boot. Just went out, came back, opened that boot. There was cockroach everywhere. <laughs> And I thought, why is there cockroach everywhere? They are not coming from the outside. They were inside already. The cockroach were inside. They were not there because of the pizza. They were already inside because the car was very dirty. The purpose of the cockroach is to rebuke you and tell you it's time for a revival and reformation in your hygiene. All right? Even the cockroach has its purpose. But I don't want to talk about these insects and these flowers any longer because some of you might be going like, this is common knowledge, but I want to talk about your purpose as human beings. As, no, no, let, let's be more specific. As pathfinders. Dr. Dr. Thomas Tien was, was mentioning just now, pathfinders ought to be pathfinders. I, I hope you get that, okay? Pathfinders are supposed to be pathfinders. And, 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 and we, are, we are here yearly, every year we train, you know. You, you think that you're just playing a small part. No, no, I, I want to talk to, to each and every one of you, uh, the young one, you know. Sometimes we, we feel so unimportant. Oh, we feel, oh, they're the big one, oh, they're doing such important things. And we feel that, oh, no, the little one, you know, maybe when we grow up, then we will be important. No, I'm here to tell you that at your age, when you were born, you are very important. There's a lot of things that the old one cannot do when you grow old. And that's why at your age, you ought to take advantage. We have a purpose. Pathfinders have a purpose. Seven-day Adventist pathfinders have a purpose. And it is a purpose, the same purpose, for all Seventh-day Adventists as well. So some of you might say, you know what, I'm not a Pathfinder. No, it applies to you. Pathfinder is just one of the forms to finish the purpose that we were created for. What is the purpose? You know, What is 
our purpose. What is our purpose as Pathfinders, as Seventh-day Adventist Pathfinders? We, we, look at it, we, look, we look from the beginning of the Bible, okay? That, that's where we look. We look at, we look at the time of Adam. If, if Pathfinders were, were at the time of Adam, then our purpose would be, don't listen to the woman. <laughs> no, no, it's not that. It's don't eat that fruit, all right? And make sure that woman stays with the husband, all right? So that would be your purpose. But that's not our purpose. If we look at, at the time of Noah, Noah's purpose would be what? To tell them that there will be a flood coming. Alright? That there will be a flood coming and God's judgment is going to come upon you and there will be a flood that will come and destroy this whole world. That was Noah's purpose. It is not our purpose to be a weather forecast. Don't go around telling people that I predict it will rain and then all that. No, no, it's not, it's not your purpose. It's not our purpose. It's Noah's purpose. If we look at the time of Moses, what was his purpose? His purpose was to make sure the people that came out from Egypt were to what? To reach the promised land. That, that by reaching the promised land, they ought to trust God and keep His commandments. To reach the promised land. That's not our purpose today. We are not going to reach the promised land that was promised to Moses. We have a different promised land today. So our purpose is not, it's not the same as Moses. It's not the same as Noah. It's not the same as Adam. We look at the time of uh, the New Testament and, and, and the time of John the Baptist. His purpose was what? To gather his people to repent as, as the Messiah was coming. Is that our purpose? No, it's not our purpose. That is not the Pathfinder's purpose to, to tell that the Messiah is coming for the first time. That is not our purpose. Then we look at a time after Jesus Christ died. We look at Peter. We look at Paul. Their purpose was what? To make sure to bring the gospel to the Gentiles. Is that our purpose? No, because we are the Gentiles. That's not our specific purpose. So then I asked in, the, in this 21st century, as Pathfinders, as Seventh-day Adventists, what is our purpose? Has God left us? Was that the last purpose for God's people? I want you to know. I want the adventurers to know. I want the Pathfinders to know that you have a specific purpose as Seventh-day Adventists. That you have a role, none like other. You have a role so, 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 so important and so direct that it's not the only the older one or those who come into this pulpit that are to use it. But it is you at your age that can be a very powerful tool for God. As nature has its purpose, so you have to. And so I ask, what is that purpose? Are we too comfortable today? Is seven-day Adventist too comfortable? You know, once an Adventist pastor was asking a Lutheran in Germany, and he asked, what can we contribute? All right, what can we contribute to this Christian community? What can we add? And the Lutheran said, you know, you have had. You have contributed. Back in the days, you guys were people that we feared. You had tents and you were everywhere. You preached about the second coming of Jesus Christ. And everybody was attracted to that message. And we Lutherans were afraid. The rest of the Christians were afraid of losing members. But today, he says, but today, but today, we are no longer afraid. God, if it feels like you are the same as us. You have a church. You no longer preach about the end time as critical as it is. And we are no longer afraid. I hope that's not true. We have a specific purpose. Are we too comfortable? That's the question. 
Are we too comfortable in where we are seated? Has this chair in the church become more comfortable than the bed at home? Because some of us seem to enjoy sleeping in these benches rather at home. And my, my, my solution for that is if you bring God into your home, your bed will be so sweet to sleep that when you come to these benches, you'll be wide awake. But we had so many problems under our bed sheet that when we reach home, we feel uncomfortable. The first place to be a Christian, as I realize, is at home. Because that's where you become yourself. That's where you cannot pretend anymore. And if you are Christian at places where you cannot pretend, then you will definitely be, you will definitely be a better Christian in places where you can pretend. Like here. Standing in front of you. You cannot see my weaknesses as coming to church. I wear the best attires. I give the best smile. I talk in the most polite way. Because I'm not going to deal with you every day. I'm going to deal with you once a week. And therefore, I'll say, you know what? Once a week, I can tolerate. And therefore, once a week can be a fake person. But you cannot be a fake person at home. And that's why Christianity has to start at home. Are we too comfortable? Because if we are, then we are not fulfilling our purpose. And the sad part is this. If the bee does not fulfill its purpose, 70% of, of our, our, what? our cons consumption will disappear. But if humans, or seven element this, does not fulfill its purpose, we are letting the whole world down. We don't have special privileges. We simply have a special message. In Matthew 24 verse 14, it says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Our specific purpose in, in putting into simple words is what you have heard always. But I want, you to remind, I want to remind you again that you have a purpose to what? To preach about what? To, pr to preach about Christ's second coming. We talk about love. Let's just say you know. You know that there is a typhoon that's coming. And a typhoon that is going to be so bad that it's going to be at signal number five. And it's going to hit Penang. My question is this, what would you do for your friend? Would you tell them how much you love them and then pack your clothes and leave? Or would you tell them to pack their clothes and leave because there's a typhoon that's coming? You see, Noah had to warn them. And sometimes we are so afraid to warn people that Christ is coming and His judgment is coming. And when His judgment comes, the wrath of God comes. That is our purpose. To warn the people. So that for us, for us to preach the gospel that Jesus Christ has come to die for your sins and is coming again to save those who believe in Him. But also you've got to warn to those who don't believe in Him. Let's say it's time to repent now. Does your friend know about Jesus? Does your friend know about Jesus that loves you, that dies for you? Does your friend know about Jesus coming again and how clear it is and that there is enough? And that's what we are worried about. We simply say, you know what, Lord? There is not enough evidence. I will look like a fool. I know we don't like to tell something that there is not enough evidence. We look like we are a liar. We look like we are making something up. But I'm telling you, there is enough evidence. The only problem is this, we are not searching. Have you searched for the Word of God? It, it is true, it, it's in history books. And God says, go and tell your friends. He says, go and preach and be a witness. That is your role. 
to preach, to share with your mouth, and to be a witness, to live a life that resembles God's character. That is your goal. That is the goal of the Seventh-day Adventist Pathfinders. You come, you come to Pathfinder and we learn all about survival skills. For what? So that we can buy and be successful in our career and we can buy a good nice house with aircon and soft bed. That doesn't make sense. You go through Pathfinders, you learn about survival skills, you learn how to survive in the jungle, you learn how to what? How to prepare a, a wooden table, a wooden chair, you, you prepare how to sleep in the tent, you learn all about this in surviving in nature. But when you're not in Pathfinder, your whole, your whole life is to focus on how to have a nicer house, how to have a nicer bed, how to live more comfortably, how to be away from nature. That doesn't make sense. The reason why Pathfinder exists, the reason why we learn how to survive in the jungle is because of what? It's because when Jesus Christ, before the coming of Jesus Christ, we know that there will be a time of trouble such as never before. And in that time of trouble, we, are we going to stay comfortably at home? No, we're not. We are going to run and survive. And that's where Pathfinder plays a big part. And how to survive in the jungle. How to commune with nature. I want to use this illustration. It says, in Matthew 24, verse 37 and 39, it says, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So, so Jesus uh, put Noah and uh, our, our time, you know, in similar context. And it says, For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. How can we better fulfill our purpose? Jesus said that the time of the end is going to be the same as the time of Noah. And our purpose is to what? To preach and to be a witness. To share and to live our life. To preach about the second coming of Jesus Christ to live a life that Christ wants us to live. To have His full character. And, 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 and by doing that, we are preparing for what's about to come. But we look at Noah. We look at the life of Noah. Alright? How, how did he fulfill? How did he fulfill his purpose? Noah's purpose was what? The same, similar to us. The flood was coming. The judgment is coming. But God gave a solution. In Noah's time, it was the ark. In our time, is what? To believe. Do you see how simple that is? Noah's time was to enter the ark. For our time, is to simply believe and have faith in Jesus. That is so easy. The Christ has, has made it easier and easier and easier for us. But it seems like it's harder and harder and harder for us. We look at the life of Noah. First thing, all right, how do we better fulfill this, this, this purpose? This purpose on, on how to prepare for the, for the second coming, all right? How do we fulfill this purpose? All right, first point is this. I have three points. First point is this. Preparation before the opportunity. If you look at Noah, Jesus, uh, God told him that the flood is coming. He took his time to what? Let's look at verse 14. God says, uh, Genesis chapter 6, verse 14. It's not in the slide, but I'll read it to you. It says, Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shall thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. God says, Build an ark. That would be the plan of salvation for you. For us is believe, and you shall be saved. God always has a way out. If, if you, look, you look at it, the flood, before the flood came, Noah had to do his best to prepare that ark. When we know what is ahead of us, we've got to take time to prepare for it. Look at the life of Jesus. 
Jesus knew that he was going to be crucified, that he was going to face a time of pain, a loneliness. And what did he do? He prayed. He prayed the whole night. Where was his disciples? Sleeping. Because Jesus prepared, when the time came, he fulfilled his purpose. But where was his disciples? Gone. Not because they lacked preparation, but because they had no preparation. I was talking to Dr. Danny O the other day and he was telling me that we need to not only uh, find the finishing end, but we need to plan and set goals. We look at the life of, uh, what is this? We look at the life of Jesus and, and, and when, when he, before he started his ministry, 30 years of preparation. 30 years. He prepared for an opportunity. Now, I want to apply this in, 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 in your personal ministry. I want to apply this in, in your care group example. I remember once I had a care group and, and I was in that care group and we were trying to look for, we were wondering why, why isn't there any seekers? Lord, Lord, what, what have we done that there is no seekers? That, that, that was our question. And, and, and as I look at it, I'll go like, no, the problem why there's no seekers is this. It's us. It's the leaders. I wasn't, we, we weren't reading the Bible day in and day out. So therefore, why, why would, if God were to send seekers to us, what we would do is destroy the soul, then nourish the soul. And so I, 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 told, I told my team, you know what, we have to read the Bible every day. We, don't worry about the seekers. We run our care group, but we got to prepare ourselves. God will send the seekers. So, so we were accountable to each other and we were doing our devotion day in and day out. Some would miss and we were like, don't worry, if you miss, just start again. After three to, after three to four months, we realized that now suddenly there's a friend that's coming, suddenly there's a friend that's coming. And suddenly the care group from, from five to six people became 12 people, double the amount. And we realized that it is not because now we were better, but because now we prepared ourselves and God saw that we prepared ourselves and says, now you're ready, let me send you the seekers. And that's why maybe the reason why our church is not filled, it's not growing, is because maybe it, we are the ones that's not preparing. But sometimes we have this idea that, you know what, uh, the message is not for everyone. You see, the Bible tells us that, you know, some people will reject the message, you know. We, we cannot do anything about it. They, they simply will reject and we find that the problem is them, you know. They, don't, they are not interested in the Word of God. But we actually haven't prayed for them. We haven't prayed for them to come to church. We haven't prayed for them to accept Jesus Christ. We haven't done any effort in being their friends. We go to them and tell them, you know what, judgment is coming. You better change it. We try to correct them. We try to correct everything, every of their mistakes. But we don't try to be friends with them. We don't prepare ourselves for them. And when they don't come, we, we blame it on them. We got to prepare before the opportunity arrives. You know, there was a man by the name of Les Brown. Maybe you heard of him. He's a motivational speaker. He wanted to work as a, a radio DJ. You know, the one in the uh, hits.fm, someone is always speaking. He wanted to work there. And, and, and the teacher told him that you got to prepare. And he says, prepare for what? I don't have a job. Why should I be I preparing? Why, why am I preparing? I don't have a job. And, 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 and the teacher told Les Brown, and this is what he said. He said, it is better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than have an opportunity and not be prepared. It is better that you don't have the opportunity but you are well prepared than to, be, than to have that opportunity and not be prepared. And that's why it's very important for us as, as, as Pathfinder 7 and this, as we know the end is coming, and if, if we are not going to prepare ourselves, if we're not going to prepare ourselves, if we're making no effort in preparing ourselves, then when Jesus Christ comes, we'll be exactly the same. We're not safe because we're in this building. Some of us have been in this building for too long, and, and we got to go out. We have been in this building for too long. We've got to get out and surf. And I think one of the greatest ministries out of this, which I now enjoy, is the Sungai Ara ministry. People come there and they enjoy the Bible study. 
They enjoy it. You know? Have you seen it? God sends people there. There are about 15 people who come there every week to study the Bible. I'm talking about 15 non-Adventists. And you'll find about five Adventists over there. 15 non-Adventists coming there to study the Word. And after that, 15, there are even now another, maybe a five to six, eight, eight more coming after that to listen to the Word of God preaching. When you prepare yourself, God will send you the opportunity. Especially when you know there is something ahead that's coming. That the second coming is very near. You ought to do is prepare. And so Noah did. He prepared. He did that up. Second, possession used for your purpose. One of the biggest complaints, and we ask, what is the greatest need? And, and what is the answer? Oh, we need money so that we can now move on to this program. We, don't have, we, we cannot proceed in this ministry because we do not have enough money. We do not have people. And I realize that is the biggest complaint, but, but the truth is this. All you need is you, the Word of God, and God Himself, the Holy Spirit. We are waiting for, for God to give us before we go. But the truth is this, God has already given you. Use what you have around you. Use what you have around you. That, that's what I, I learned. That's what I realized. Use what you have around you. What did Noah do? When Noah built that ark, what, he cut the trees around them. Who helped him build the ark? The people helped him build the ark. Use what you have around you. Possessions used for your purpose. We got to know that whatever you need in your life, God has already given you. And, and we, we, we tend to think that we want this. No, we think that we need what we want. And, and let me tell you, if, if the longer we stay with the world, the longer the world will tell you things that you do not need. Recently, I was watching in YouTube and an advertisement came and it tells us how we need the iPhone 11 Pro. <laughs> yes. Do you know why do you need the iPhone 11 Pro? Does anybody know? Because I don't know too, you see? <laughs> it tells you things that you don't need and the world is creating things that, that we don't need. But the truth is, is we think that we need them because we actually want it. God has given you what you need and therefore what you need is around you. Therefore, use what is around you to fulfill the purpose that God has given you. You see, God, if you surrender what you have, the possession that what you have, if you surrender what you have to God, God will actually give you that one thing that you need. And that one thing that you need Jesus told Martha about it. You see, remember the story of Mary and Martha? When Jesus came and Mary was busy with every other thing. No, Martha was busy with every other thing. And Mary was listening to the word of God and having this communion with God, a relationship with God. And Martha was upset. And Jesus told Martha, you are worried about many things and so are we. But there's only one thing that you need. And Mary has it. And that is the communion with Jesus Christ. That's what you need. Use your possession. Use what you have around you. Use whatever skills and talent that you have. As leaders, use whatever people that you have. Because if we don't, then the parable of the talents will come in, which will remind us that God will take it away if you don't use it. We have to use what we have. Whatever we have. See, God does not care about the result. God cares about your faithfulness. God does not care what you produce. He cares about your position in where you are. Because if you look at the life of, the life of Noah, he, he preached who entered the ark. 
No one else but his family and the animals. But he was, he was successful in the eyes of God. Was he successful in the eyes of men? No. Because why? Because he was preaching to the rest of the people, but nobody was supporting him. Nobody believed in what he preached. If we look at Moses, he himself did not enter the promised land. He was supposed to guide them. He could not go. How many people entered the promised land? Maybe two. How about the rest? But God does not care about the result. Because at times you'll be giving Bible study, you'll be sharing, you'll be preaching, you'll be going around and, and telling the word of God, but there seems to be no result. God does not care about the result. God cares about your faithfulness. God did not ask you and say, now you'll be successful, God is going to bless you, you're going to baptize 10,000 people. That's not what God said. God says, you preach because you believe in Him. And many of the times when we don't see results, we go like, I'm, I'm not doing well. It's pointless. Don't, don't get discouraged. Use what you have around you. Noah used what he had around him. The people that didn't believe in him helped him build the ark. The people that, that didn't believe him were the ones who cut the trees. Use what you have to fulfill your purpose. Third point. Present situation does not determine future condition. What you're going through right now does not always mean that it's going to be the same in the future. Let me give you an example. If you're failing right now and you're not succeeding, that doesn't mean you will not succeed in the future. Just because you are having problem teaching, that doesn't mean you will not be a good teacher in the future. You see, for you to grow, it takes failures. Because it is in that failures, we grow. And that's why the Bible is written. To look at the failures of the Israelite, to look at the failures in the Old Testament, so that we won't make the same mistake. But we make the same mistake as them, as they read the people of their past and did not learn from it. And so today we are not learning from their mistake. The situation that you are in today will not determine your future, will not predict your future. You might be failing right now. You might not be successful right now. You might not be doing well right now. You might be giving Bible study and there seems to be no baptism. You might be teaching and it seems like in your class people are leaving. But God tells you that it is true failures you will succeed. It is true failures you grow. The Bible tells us that, that a man falleth how many times? Seven, no, a man falleth many times. Alright, seven times. Completely, he will fall, 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 but he will always rise again. However, for the wicked man, he will remain falling. It is true our struggles that we grow. And some of us, the saddest thing is we don't learn from our struggles. We don't learn from our struggles. We got to take each struggles and learn what is God trying to tell me. I myself have new challenges. And this message that I prepare is a message that I prepare for myself, actually. A message that I can learn from it as I'm going through my struggles. You have an identity as Pathfinders. You have an important role. You are God's chosen people to preach about the coming of Jesus Christ, to share the Word of God, to live the way Christ wants you to live. And how do you do that? By just three points. It's to prepare for the opportunity instead of waiting for the opportunity and prepare. It is to use whatever you have around you for fulfilling your purpose. And to remind yourself that as you fulfill this purpose, as, as Noah fulfilled this purpose, as Noah built the ark, and he was criticized. There was no rain before. 
He went to the ark. Seven days waited silence. His faith, his faith was tested. People were making fun of him. They were laughing and said, what? You're now inside the ark for seven days? There's no rain before? What? What are you doing, Noah? Come out here. Breathe this fresh air. Seven days he was in the ark without rain. And finally, the rain came. You might go and preach and, and people will go like, what, what are you preaching? What are you sharing? Your whole Facebook uh, profile is all about the Word of God. You're posting about the Word of God every day. Like, what are you talking about, man? God is not going to save you. You've got to earn money, they're going to tell you. But there will be a time that comes and we have this special purpose just as Noah has. You might look like a failure among your friends. But Jesus has His reward for you in heaven. As a closing verse, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is what? He is a new creation. He is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You are a new being right now. You no longer live the old life. You are such precious soul in the eyes of God. Come, let us fulfill this purpose together. As the bee does what he needs to do. As the, as the, the ants does what he needs to do. As the cockroach does what he needs to do. As the flower does what he needs to do. We have what we need to do. And it's to preach about Jesus' second coming. And if we don't do that, the people that we love will not be able to know. The people that we love will not be safe because we failed to do our part. I pray that each and every one of us will no longer feel comfortable. We no longer take time in sitting on this bench. I hope that your Sabbath afternoon is all about reaching out. I hope that your Sabbath afternoon is all about going out to, to save souls because that's all we got to do. Haven't we realized? Haven't we realized with the amount of signs that are there? Haven't we realized that Jesus is really coming? Do we live life like Jesus is coming? Do we share the word of God as, Jesus, as if Jesus is coming? Oh, we are still so comfortable in this church because indeed this church is a very beautiful church. But I want to tell you, sitting down here will not save you. I want to encourage each and every one of you take this opportunity to go out. In behalf of Sungai Ra, I say, come. Come and support there. They are they're beginning to be more visitors than members. And when the Bible says the workers are few, it is really true. The workers are really few. Because do you know how much time that one has to invest on one person? A parent, you, can, you have four children, you're, you're going crazy already. You have two children and you're having a headache. But how much more a, a, a person that has to handle an adult? You know, a church pastor is supposed to be expected to handle the, 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 the whole hundred, hundred members. No, no, that's not how it does. A successful pastors delegate and have a teamwork with them. If you think, oh no, they're, they're Dr. Daddy O is there, whoa. Miss Cheng Chi is there. Oh, no, no, no. I'm telling you. We can only take care of two to three person at, 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 at most. At your home. How about at school? Tell your friends. And what you share and how you live your life will let them know about Jesus Christ's second coming. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, O oh Lord, you, you give us a, a real purpose. And our purpose is to, to tell the world that you are coming again. And until we do that, O oh Lord, we are wasting our time. Until we fulfill that purpose of preaching 
about your second coming. If you are doing anything else aside from preaching your second coming, if you are doing anything else aside from preparing your people for the second coming, we are wasting our time. I pray, O Lord, that you stir in our hearts to go out and reach the people out there. Lord, we know that you have given us this message to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I pray, O Lord, I pray that we all fulfill this purpose. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.